You hear this? Not sure if the camera's picking it up, but my neighbors down the road, they play karaoke music, I think. And uh, I don't speak Vietnamese, so I don't, I don't know what they're singing about. It could be the saddest song in the world. It could be about how they won the lotto and then lost it all in a pyramid scheme. I don't know. It's interesting to listen to at times, I'll tell you that. Let's go in the kitchen. Hey, right off the bat, I want to go ahead and say that this video has been sponsored. Yeah, we're going to say sponsored by Square Pegs. Square Pegs, we're just a family that doesn't quite fit in anywhere else. We love video games, board games, Legos, books, and being weirdos together. So, what are we doing today, and why is this video particularly is being presented by Square Pegs? Well, they gave me something out of the kindness of their hearts, so thank you, Jay, and the rest of you over there at Square Pegs. And I'm going to decide to try it out because, you know, I've been experimenting a lot with the cooking. Uh, as some of you might already know, my oven tabletop or the, the top of the oven is glass and that cracked a little while ago. And I, it's out of, it doesn't, they don't make it anymore. You got to replace the whole thing. So instead of just getting that, I got an electron, uh, electronic burner. And before I got that, I was doing everything through a rice cooker which is insane. Try cooking at Thanksgiving with just an oven and a rice cooker. That's nuts, but I pulled it off. And uh, you know, later on that, that following Christmas, I decided to get myself an Instapot and it has paid off pretty well. So now they have given me another addition to the Instapot, something that goes with it. So right now, before we go any further, I just want to go into the ingredients of everything. For this, you need an Instapot sausage, hot dog, air frying lid, air fry, 20 minutes, 390. Now let's get into the details. All right, so what was the point of all that? Basically, once I got this thing, these things actually, I wanted to look up online uh, some recipes of how to do particular things because it just, the, the, the manual that comes with this thing just tells you basically how to turn it on and how to clean it and take care of it doesn't really tell you how to cook food. So there's a lot of trial and error going on with Instapot. Uh, luckily, we do have a thing called the internet where I was able to look up particular recipes. The problem I was having is usually I would go to a website uh, after a Google search, like how do I cook chicken in this thing? And I would end up with... If you're looking for new ways to cook chicken in your Instapot, I've included my simple Instant Pot chicken thigh recipe down below. There are many pot casseroles, soups, plus recipes found below for the basics for shredded chicken and meal prep. Speaking of meal prep, if you like to make foods ahead of a week to save yourself time, the Instant Pot can also be helpful. You can also cook batch of chicken breasts or thighs in a favorite food. Some of you YouTubers are guilty of this as well. You know who you are. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, where today we'll be making one of my favorite meals of a chicken cordon bleu instapot with cream cheese. Don't forget to like with a thumbs up. My little Timmy loves my chicken cordon bleu instapot with cream cheese. He asks for it nearly every week, and if you want to see my videos every week, don't forget to subscribe. So this recipe is a spin-off of my old worldly gra- Alright, so that is why at the very beginning there, I went over all the ingredients so you can have that ready. Because that kind of stuff just drives me up the frigging wall. So let's go over everything first off that came with the air fryer. First off, when Jay got me the thing, it arrived in this box. This thing is huge. When I first saw the box, I thought it was like a whole nother pot. Because look at it, you could fit an entire pot inside. But no, this entire thing was just for this guy over here. So here's everything we're playing with. This right here, this won't be part of what we're doing right now. This is a dehydration tray, I guess is the best way to put it. We're not using it right now, so we're gonna put you off to the side. What we are doing is first, let's look at this guy. This ring right here is like a base for the air fry basket to go in. And I was a little worried because at first, that seems like it's plastic to me. It does. It's very, very thin material. I don't know how durable it is, but this is like a good strong aluminum or tin of some kind, and it just snaps right in there. So you take this guy, and it goes right in the Instapot's 
metal pot. And there you go. It just, this is the setup for air frying. And it's really simple after that. We take our meat. It always depends what you're doing to how long and everything because both hot dog and sausages need different timings. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put the sausage in first. We're gonna lay it around the edges. Get it nice along the walls. There we go. So now you can see like we have a triforce of sausage there. Now the hot dogs, they're not gonna be in as long and it's not as picky as uh, how you really arrange them. They're going to cook pretty evenly. Um, you know what, let's, you know, let's be asymmetrical about this. Let's place it like that. You know, I feel like I'm making, I'm, I'm making a kiln. <laughs> so look, I like how it's like Lincoln Logs uh, counter stacked up against each other. So that's it. This is all you have to do for this particular uh, operation. I arrange it like this. I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do it. This is what, you know, seems right to me. But let's move on to the lid now. All right, now something they stress about a hundred times over is do not plug in the regular Instapot when you're using this thing. Uh, I guess they don't want the two to trigger because this is its own thing and this is its own thing. There are some models where everything is right here. You just put on a lid depending if you want to pressure cook or air fry it. This was, first off, this sucker is pretty freaking heavy. I. Now the original pressure cooker lid that this came with, it kind of screws into place and it locks down. This one doesn't really do that. It just sits there as best as it can. Now the air fryer plug, as you can see here, came with this giant plastic thing. I guess they really, really don't want you to use the two plugs. I've even unplugged the, the pot itself. Uh, the plug can come out. So we just get that in there. We have a nice little beep. So what are we going to set this for? Let's go air fry. It's already set for 20 minutes at 390. That's what we want and start. And you can hear the vents blowing in the back. I'm actually going to rotate this a little bit so it's not pointing at the wall. I don't know. If, I mean, that is not a hot air at all. I think it would be safe even with this cord here for the air to be blowing right on it. But you know, just be safe. So now it's on. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically cook for half the time. Then it's going to stop or it's going to beep. It's not really going to stop. It's going to beep and it's going to say up here on the top, uh, turn food. That's where you open up and to rotate the food particular. In that particular instance, we're going to take the hot dogs out. This right here is just a little plastic tray. Basically, when you want to take the air fryer off for just a moment, you'd put it there, do your thing and then put it back. But when it's not in use, you flip it over. I really don't know the, the, the difference between this raised head. I guess this protects the coils of the air fryer itself. So that's basically it. So we're going to check in on this in about 10 minutes. It's still warming up, but then that timer will start going once it hits the particular temperature, I assume. And there it goes, the timer has started, the temperature has been reached, that was really quick, that was maybe a minute and a half, two minutes tops, and this is going. So now we just set it and forget it, and leave it alone, let it do its thing for the next 10 minutes. There we go, turn food, okay. So, lift the lid, the vent does stop when you lift it up, that's cool, all right. And it's actually saying lid. All right, oh, look at that, those hot dogs are in focus now and they look really good okay there's one here's two there's three and the fourth one looking really good okay those are nice and look golden brown uh let's rotate it did stick a little bit to the pot that's not really a problem these are sausages they're a little a little hearty and we just flip well, oh, that's okay. Let's try and get them back in there. Okay, that's done. Pick up the lid. We put it back till we hear that familiar chime and 10 more minutes for the sausages. Hot dogs in the meantime, they're looking pretty good. 
All right, two of these we're gonna cut up, two of these we're gonna put in buns. And let's see how the boys like, because the hot dogs are for them. They don't really like sausages a whole lot. All right, here we go with the hot dogs on poor man's bread. You know, I'm hearing sizzling come from the uh, fryer. I wonder if that's, I guess that's a good thing. There you go, bud. Thank you. Is it hot? It's not too hot? It, no, it's pretty good. Yeah, you like it like this? Yes. Do you like it like this or when I boil them? Oh, both. Okay. But you'll have this way again? Yeah. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. Three, two, one. Your next entry in the Royal Rumble. Oh, wait. So, now it's in a cooldown method until I finally hit the off button. So, oh, wow, you can hear this. Put you over there. Listen. Listen. Yeah, look at that. All right. It looks like one of them ruptured a little bit. That's okay. Actually, it looks like all three of them ruptured a little bit. They might have been a little too dry. Uh, with these, these were frozen at the beginning of the day. Let's go ahead and take them out. <laughs> so, there we go. All right, look at that. It's nice and brown. Let's see. Yeah, this, if you wanted to slice these up and put it into a, like a pasta sauce or something, or like uh, some Italian dish, these would be perfect. Okay. And you can see, you can hear it still. All that like grease down there has dripped down to the bottom of the metal uh, metal pan. So that's where all that is, and you're not going to eat any of that. Let's see if I can. There we go. Yep, that's all the grease that it came out of the sausages. So none of that's going to go in your system. You're going to have well, there's still like a lot of fat and whatever in here, but still, really hard to cut with one hand. There we go. Okay. That is now if you're wondering these are sweet. No, they're not. They're mild Italian sausages. Nothing special about them. They're very similar to bratwurst obviously. So there you go. These are done. Now, the tricky thing. Next time what I want to do is I want to use this, the dehydration pan. And you see that little ridge on the inside this Whoops, you're supposed to lower it down like that. And there we go. That is so you can have a second layer if you want to start a dehydration process. The problem is that takes a lot longer. That was These sausages only took about 20 minutes to cook. That takes several hours, and depending on the thickness of the meat you want to cut. Day two, it's a little afternoon right now and I wanted to get started on this pretty early in the day because I noticed there is a dehydrate feature on this air frying lid. So I'm thinking, let's try and make some jerky of some kind. Now I've got some uh, pork chops here. They're about an inch thick. The problem is it's really, really hard to find instructions online about how to do something like this. So this is all guesswork on my behalf. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten them out as best as I can and then maybe cut them into smaller strips so they can dehydrate a little better. I don't know. This is going to be first time. I've never done this before and I'm going to assume it's going to take six to seven hours to dehydrate. So let's get to chopping. All right, here's my pork chop. It's got a good amount of fat on it. That's not too bad. And like I said, I want to get this as flat as I can. I don't have a rolling pin or mallet, so I'm just going to use this uh, potato smasher and just flatten the sucker out. It's kind of fun. Does not want to stay. But okay, let's see what we got. All right, so that's not too bad. Let's get a little flatter, flip it over, give it some more pounding. I think it'd be safer if I used two hands. This might take a minute. All right, after a few minutes of beating my meat, you can see uh, here's a fresh piece, and that's about the same size as when it started. So yeah, we got some good shrinkage here. God, the euphemisms. All right, so now I'm just gonna start slicing. All right, um, I wonder, you know, I will probably go against the grain because that's, oops, that's the way you're supposed to go. So let's go against the grain and get a couple of good strips out of this. All right, after some slicing, we got like six good little chunks and a little bit of fat right there. I, I'm assuming 
yeah, let's throw that in there and see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna smash on this a little more, see if I can get a little more flat, and then we'll do it a few more times and get it in the pot. All right, so we have two pork chops there at the bottom. Let's take our extra, let's see. There we go, doing it right this time. Slide it in there, it's nice and firm. Air fryer, let's get you on there. Okay, oh, we gotta plug it in. Let's say dehydrate 125 at six hours. Sure, let's do that and let's see what we get. So it's kicking on, it's doing its thing. You can hear the fan in the back going. Uh, so I guess I'll see you in six hours. I don't know if this thing is gonna beep like half, like in three hours and tell me to turn the food. I really don't know. I didn't see that anywhere online. But basically, we just want all the moisture to get sucked out. So here we go. See you in six. Guys, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I don't know if it's gonna be good, bad, success. Um, I really have no idea. I didn't season the meat. I didn't do anything to it. I just literally threw it in there, hit the start button, see what happens. So this is gonna be a good trial and error. Uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I don't know, we'll find out. 30, last 30 seconds. I just wanted to point this out real quick. I had a, a like an online uh, video meeting with coworkers and I love how like one of them said, hey, we still got uh, the heat miser going on here. So, yeah, it's, it's hair dye. It doesn't just go away unless it's really cheap. And this is, this is growing out. I like how I got a layer of red a thin layer of bleached hair and then the normal brown hair is coming in so all right here we go all right we are over let's hit the cancel and we move that guy over there and let's just unplug it to be safe okay all right wow look at that so oh this is definitely Definitely. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's uh, uh okay. <laughs> so we have this bit right there. This, this is definitely a learning experience, that's for sure. And oh, we got one more in there. Okay. All right. Well, it's all nice and uh, crispy, a little hard. Uh, let's see, it is nice and warm. Uh, it's still a little juicy. All right. Okay, let's... Cheers! It's a little gummy. Um, it's definitely been... Um, jerkified. <laughs> it's not as dehydrated as I thought. I don't know. I actually added a, like another half hour to the six hours, so it went six and a half hours. I'm talking with food in my mouth. Sorry. I would have to say a success. I could see myself chopping this up into little bits, kind of like bacon bits or whatever, throwing it in some uh, like some noodle soup or something. Ooh, throw it in like a ramen or an udon. Ooh, that sounds pretty good actually. I'm gonna call this success. I think I'll try it again too. So that's it, that is the dehydrated pork chops. It did get nice and uh, gamey, just like jerky normally would. So it's it's great for, it'd probably be a really good snack actually for me, because there's nothing in here but protein and some sodium because it's, it's pork. But I didn't add any salt or any sauces or anything. So yeah, I'm gonna call this a win. So guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. This was probably the strangest breakdown I've ever done. No, it isn't. It's not the strangest. I hope you enjoyed it. So please, go ahead, like and subscribe. You know the deal. Give me a comment too. Matter of fact, I'm gonna issue a challenge. Go ahead, share this video. If I get 10 separate, com 10 separate people to make comments on this video, I'll sing the Heat Miser song. Ooh, that, that actually looks pretty good, I like that. With my stupid dyed hair. So guys, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm gonna enjoy more of this later on. 
So, uh, this was the greatest dehydration ever. I'll never speak it up again. <laughs>